Hey, freedom lovers, this is William Moore, and you're watching Beyond the Ties of Bind. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the program. I pray everyone is having as good of a day as you can possibly have, living under the shadow of tyranny and oppression that the federal government now casts across the country. And when I say federal government, I include Donald Trump. And if you believe that Donald Trump is not a part of the problem, that means you're a part of the problem. Donald Trump has been selected to be controlled opposition. He has been selected to lead the opposition against the New World Order, if you will. He has been selected to control you. If you cannot look at everything that Donald Trump has done and take the information and think about it critically and come to the conclusion that he is part of this all, then you do not have the ability to think critically, you suffer from cognitive dissonance, you're part of the cult of personality, and you're no different than these sheep out there running around wearing masks because the government tells you to. Donald Trump has racked up more debt in three and a half years than Barack Obama did in eight years. You were all pissed about that. Donald Trump took the money that was designated to go to the World Health Organization, who... And he stopped that, and a lot of you were like, Yeah, he's sticking it to the NWO, man. Well, guess what? He gave it to Gavi, which is an organization funded and founded by who? Bill and Melinda Gates. So, wake up, think critically, and you'll be able to see the big picture a lot better. I took this picture earlier today. Face coverings are recommended while you shop. This is from a local Wally World in Jefferson County, Missouri. It says that you can wear a bandana, scarf, homemade mask, etc. Even though these items have no scientific data behind them to show that they will stop the spread of the transmission of any virus. But these are okay, just as long as your face is covered. You have to have a face covering, not a medical or surgical mask which will stop a virus, even though the medical and surgical masks which are used in surgical environments do not stop the spread of any viral transmission. Even those do not stop it. All you have to do is cover your face. Right now it says recommended. Soon it's going to say required. Why? Well, this sign wasn't up just a couple days ago, but it's up now. The irony is that Jefferson County, Missouri is going to be discussing a face mask mandate at a meeting sometime this week, the Public Board of Health is going to meet and they're going to vote on this. I guarantee the vote has already been predetermined. Just like in other areas of the country right now where you have governors, you have mayors, you have county executives, you have city councils, and you have public health boards voting and issuing mandates that people cover their face, wear a face mask when they go in public. And that's what Jefferson County, Missouri is going to do. They're going to debate whether or not people should be required to wear a face mask when they go in public. Even though the data, all of the scientific data, all of the evidence shows that these face masks do not help to stop the spread of viral, this virus. But they're going to pass it. You know why? Because they're not in control. You know, it doesn't matter if the country, uh, part of the country that's requiring a face mask is controlled by Republicans or Democrats. Because you can go down to southwest Missouri and you have a lot of conservative people down there that are in charge. In Greene County, in Jasper County, Springfield, in Joplin. And guess what? They're all voting to require the citizens or, you know, well, and, they, and most people are citizens. But they're all requiring the people to wear a a face mask, a face covering. And when I say all peop most people are citizens, it's because most people choose to be a slave of the corporation known as the United States government. I am not a citizen. A lot of you out there watching are not citizens. You are individuals. Many of you belong to the kingdom of Messiah, which was revealed 2,000 years ago. Not a future revealing but revealed 2,000 years ago. We'll get into that later. Uh, but anyway, face coverings recommended, soon to say required, while you shop. Hey, all of our associates are required to wear one. Now we're going to require that the customers do. See, they're conditioning people to get ready for this debate 
and the decision which is going to be handed down by the Jefferson County Board of Public Health that's going to require everybody to wear a face mask. They're just conditioning people. Now, why is this going on? Why do you look across this country, and it doesn't matter if it's a Republican-controlled area, Democratic-controlled area, it doesn't matter that there's evidence which shows that covering your face doesn't stop viral transmission, but everybody's doing this. It doesn't matter, you know, governor, whether he's Democrat, Republican, mayor, Democrat, Republican, county executive, Democrat, Republican, city council controlled by Democrats or Republicans, county board of health controlled by Democrats or Republicans. So it doesn't matter if you vote harder next time. It doesn't matter if you get the right people in. Because there's somebody else calling the shots. There's somebody else giving the orders right now. And that's FEMA. See, Donald Trump, this great president that you all have been brainwashed to believe is a great president because you watch fixed news, you know, Fox News or faux news, CNN, MSNBC, it's, it's all the same. But fixed news, they kind of carry water for Donald Trump. But anyway, Donald Trump. Friday the 13th of March, Friday the 13th, you know, big Freemasonry day, Friday the 13th, and then you have the Ides of March, another big Freemasonry day, our time of the year. And he declares a state of emergency at that time, which gives FEMA control over all seven districts of the United States. Now, for six months, anything FEMA does cannot be reviewed by Congress. They have a blank check to do anything that they want to do. Let's look at a couple of the executive orders that we're under right now. Executive Order 10990 allows the government to take over all modes of transportation and control of highways and seaports. Executive Order 10995 allows the government to seize and control the communication media. Hey, we're going to decide who can have a platform and who's censored, who can have a voice and who cannot have a voice. That's why your local media, your national media, and even ScrewTube, or excuse me, YouTube, they can determine who's censored and who gets to speak to the people. It's like this channel. I've got less than 150 videos and I've had now over 25 of them taken down and most of the ones that I've had taken down they are you know related to this current distress that we find ourselves in but now it doesn't matter if they take it down because I'm on library and I'm on bit shoot so FEMA they're the ones controlling everything they're calling the shots also, if you go to executive order, and we're going to look at this one a little bit more in depth. Executive order 11001 allows the government to take over all health, education, and welfare functions. Before we visit this, I'm going to read this one here. Executive order 11921 allows the Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency, FEMA, to develop plans to establish control over the mechanisms of production and distribution of energy, sources, wages, salaries, credit, and the flow of money in United States financial institutions in any undefined national emergency. It also provides that when a state of emergency is declared by the president, Congress cannot review the action for six months. And then at the end of this national emergency, he can declare another national emergency. And that means that Congress can't do anything, can't review it. FEMA can operate, you know, they have a blank check to do whatever they want. Carte blanche, whatever they want for six months. Nobody can review it. Nobody can stop it. So let's go up here to Executive Order 11001, and let's look at this in Section 1, or actually, I'm sorry, Section 2, um, Clause A, Emergency Health Services. And if we go down here, it talks about preventative and curative care related to human exposure, and here it says to radiological, chemical, and biological warfare agents. So they can take control. They control all of this identification and control of communicable diseases, their vectors and other public health hazards, inspection and control of purity of safety of food, on and on and on. Um, you know, so it talks about preventative and curative care. 
Now, preventive mask and face coverings, that falls under preventative and curative care. So we go down here to, I believe it's section three, and it states that they're going to give guidance, national program guidance, develop plans and issue guidance designed to utilize to the maximum extent the existing civilian health resources of the federal government and with their active participation, assistance, and consent, the health resources of the states and local political subdivisions thereof, meaning cities, counties, and of other civilian organizations and agencies concerned with the health of the population under all conditions of national emergency, maintain relations with health professionals and institutions to foster mutual understanding of federal emergency plans which affect health activities. There you have it. FEMA, they've outsmarted a lot of people here because most people's anger is directed towards your governors, your mayors, your county executives, your city councils, and your public boards of health. People are saying, well, we just got to vote harder next time and get the right people in. No, it doesn't matter who you get in. Because if Joe Schmo gets in and he doesn't vote a certain way, there's going to be a knock on his door and somebody's going to say, hey, hey, you, you're, next time you vote, you're going to vote a certain way. And if you don't vote a certain way, you're going to be a swimming with the fishes. That's how it works. You know, they're using PCR tests to uh, determine whether or not a person has COVID. That's how they're pumping up the case numbers. PCR test, 81% false positives. PCR test, the developer, biochemist, Carrie B. Mullis. Dr. Carrie B. Mullis states that his PCR test, polymer chain reaction test, cannot detect viral load, and it can only determine RNA sequence. So it cannot distinguish between SARS, HIV, cannot distinguish between a cold, flu, COVID, corona. It can't not make a specific determination. Then you have contact tracers contacting people who have been in contact with someone who's tested positive, And they're making diagnosis over the phone. With today's population, a bunch of hypochondriacs, 50% of the population of America, hypochondriacs, which has led to the rise of the mill or the medical industrial complex. Um, you know, the medical industrial complex is just as just as nefarious as the military industrial complex. So, you know, all these hypochondriacs out there, all this person has to do is uh, get on the phone and they can lead a person into stating that they have some of these symptoms and then they're going to declare them COVID positive. Uh, you know, now that you mention it, my throat was a little scratchy today. I did feel a little hot. I didn't take my temperature, but I bet I was running a little warm. Oh yeah, I have coughed and I have sneezed and one of my farts smelled like COVID. I bet I have it. So then the contact tracer says, yep, they've got it. And that's part of your number. That's part of your case number. A pandemic does not need manipulation of numbers. It's going to take care of itself. We have less people dying this year than what we had in the previous years. The overall death rate is down by 15%. But people think there's a pandemic I had people in my subdivision yesterday walking around 90 degree weather, 70% humidity, wearing masks. How stupid is that? Now, some of them I was able to educate and tell them that wearing the mask and they listened to me. Others did not want to listen. But, you know, even those that I was talking about, they were still, they still wore that mask when they left. How dumb can you get? to restrict your own oxygen supply and make it harder for you to breathe in 90 degree weather, walking around. How dumb do you have to be to do that? That, my friend, is a special kind of stupid. So anyway, FEMA is controlling everything. They're calling the shots. And... You know, there's nothing that anybody can do. You can show up. You can talk all you want to your county board of health. You can talk to your mayor. They're not going to change their mind. All you can do 
is you can you can express your your you know disdain for their orders you can you can exercise your freedom by not obeying them it's only one that you have to obey that's the creator he's not telling you to wear a mask he didn't tell Adam and Hawa to cover their face, told them to cover something else. It's a study for a different time. But anyway, you have to know right now that whatever you say to these mayors, county executives, it's not going to make any difference. They're getting their guidance from FEMA. That's why this is going on in Republican areas, Democratic areas. That's why this is going on. You've got, you know, this coinage shortage. There's no coinage shortage. I talk to coin dealers all the time that know exactly how much that the Federal Reserve produces in coins a year. So you have, you know, if you go to executive order, once again, 11921, it says that they will uh, control credit and the flow of money in the U.S. financial institution. That's what they're doing. They're getting rid of cash. No, it has nothing to do with the mark of the beast. And that's something for a different time also. Um, you know, prophecy had to do with the revealing of Messiah at, you know, his time. It had to do with the kingdom of Israel at his time. Prophecy always states that. Messiah stated what generation prophecy was for. And it's not for this generation. Futuristic prophecy is a lie. It, it works like the government. It works under the guise of fear to control people. But that's for another time. But you go into HEB right now. You go into Walmart. You go into Target. You go into Kroger. Some of them have one lane designated for cash transactions because they want to get rid of cash. Why? Because they control you if they can get rid of cash. They can see who has gold, who spends their money on gold and silver, coins, bullion. They can see what you spend your money on, who you give your money to. They can control you. And that is what the enemy's been trying to do ever since the beginning. In Egypt, in Babylon, in the empire of the Medes and the Persians, in the empire of Greece, in the empire of Rome, in every empire since. And we have had times like this in the past, during the Dark Ages, during the Bolshevik Revolution. Uh, people thought it was the end during the American um, War between the states. The French revolutions, people thought, were the end time prophecy being fulfilled. You have the, you know, the revolution in China. You had the Marxist revolutions. All of these things took place, and the world is still here. Uh, so anyway, those those are, you know, um, I really just want people to step back and do their own study without any type of influence from anybody else. But in one of these uh, episodes, I'm going to lay out why I believe what I believe and the truth concerning Scripture, because truth gives or Scripture gives time stamps. And scripture will interpret scripture and let you know that if you believe in futuristic prophecy, you need to step away from these YouTube videos, you need to step away from these prophetic peddlers of BS, and you need to do your own study, and you need to learn the Hebrew language a little bit as far as idioms and colloquialisms, and you need to learn the, you know, the uh, Hebrew literature, uh, you know, the literary terms connected with Hebrew literature and what they mean before you're going to understand prophecy. You know, everybody looks at this through a Greek linear lens, and that's why they're in error when it comes to prophecy. Uh, so anyway, more on that later. But, you know, the enemy, that's, you know, how he can control, and that's how he's been trying to control forever and ever and ever. And at times, he is able to, you know, control for a certain time period people through, uh, you know, uh, being able to control uh, their ability to buy and sell. But then that kingdom crumbles, and you have, you know, a new kingdom arise. But what we need to be working on is that that 
kingdom of Mashiach, kingdom of Messiah, promoting that. Quit promoting fear. Quit, you know, this fear porn. Quit promoting this defeatism. Quit promoting, you know, all of this doom and gloom. We're supposed to be overcomers. <laughs> you know, we're supposed to be winners. We're supposed to occupy. We're supposed to overcome. We're supposed to control. Uh, but, you know, you're not going to do it when you're spreading uh, fear porn and false doctrine. Uh, so anyway, FEMA's calling the shots. It's not your governors, mayors, county executives, etc. It's FEMA. They're smart. They have everyone's anger directed towards all of these other people. But they're the ones controlling the shots. They're the ones getting rid of the cash so they can control you. Uh, make you get this, you know, vaccination, make you, force you to be tested. They want to see who will comply, who will go along. We have to rise up. We have to rise up for freedom. We have to exercise our freedom. We have to be forceful in exercising our freedom. Don't bow down to these people. You know, do not bow down to these Freemasons who are wanting to control everything. Do not bow down to them. You know, exercise your freedom. Do not fear what man can do to you. And don't wear a mask. This is William Moore for Beyond the Ties of Bind. Until next time, peace. Whoa!